Crash. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see DJ Crash when you see that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You already know what time it is. If y'all know what time it is right now, y'all slipping. You know what I'm saying? Then you're going to see my nigga, Smackola. Oh, my God. This so, is what you would call killing America's beliefs on society's hoods. And if you don't know what that is, that's called kibosh, nigga. <laughs> what? We right here. You see it? What you do? You know what I'm saying? We all here, man. We all here. And I'm here to tell you that you're really about to really start construction on Kabosh. Finally, man. all of us are in the house and we've all agreed. Travis O'Gwen hit me up the other day, like, you know, you gotta give them Kabosh, man. We've been promising them, you know, they heard a little. So now, you know, when we got with Smack, and you know, we've been talking for a minute. You know what I'm saying? South by. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, South by Southwest. You know what I'm saying? Crash is with it. You know, Doc is with it, and everybody else is with it, man. Chris Calico right here, where um, the masterminds behind Kabosh, man. You know what I'm saying? All of us you see right here. So I'm telling you, to all my fans, it's official. We're gonna delve into this shit. And it's gonna be the hardest motherfucking shit that we've done. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, you hear the rock influencing our music. And they're going to put the motherfucking icing on the cake. You know what I'm saying? They're going to put the fucking icing on the cake. But it ain't going to be sweet, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be bitter as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Kabosh, baby. Right here, right now. Tech 9 now. Killing America's beliefs on society's hoods. A.K.A. Kabosh. Now, if you've never heard any music from Tech 9 or Chris Calico or anything from major indie hip-hop label Strange Music... Or if you're a newer fan of the label and its artists from, let's say, the last decade or so, then you likely have no idea what I'm referring to. But, if you're a longtime fan like myself, then chances are you know exactly what I'm referring to. Now, back in 2006, Tech 9 released his fifth, and what I consider to be one of his absolute best albums, Ever Ready to Religion. Now, when you purchased the physical version of the CD, it came with two discs, one was the main album, and the second was a bonus disc titled The Strange Music Library, which was intended to serve as a sampler disc showcasing songs from the various artists signed to the label at the time. It had four unreleased songs from Tech 9 and two each from Chris Calico, Cut Calhoun, Critical Bill, Scannerman and Snug Brim, Project Dead Man, and the final song coming from a group called Kabosh. So, what exactly is Kabosh? Well, as I stated before, it's an acronym for Killing America's Beliefs on Society's Hoods, and was a rap metal project consisting of Tech 9 and Chris Calico on vocals, and a two-piece metal band named Dirty Worms out of Austin, Texas, consisting of rapper and founder Thomas Chapman, aka Smackola, and DJ Crash, which was formed in 2001. Now, all of these artists together, under the collective name of Kabosh, would release two songs before ceasing activities as a musical unit. And these songs would be Little Pills, which is the song I was referring to from the sampler CD from 06, and God of War, which was released in 2012. Now, anyone who knows Tech Nine's music knows that he's influenced by a multitude of genres, one of them being metal. Now, I can confidently say that a major, major reason that I personally like heavy rock music and metal today is because of Tech Nine's music. But the types of metal subgenres that the two of us appreciate are somewhat different. I absolutely share some of his taste Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, The Thrash Stuff, System of a Down, amazing bands, and of course, a lot of we have a lot of common taste in soft rock and other genres, but as far as metal, we have different ideas of what is good, I would say. I mean, as I said, those few bands like the Big Four, the Thrash stuff, I agree with Tech on that. I thoroughly enjoy a majority of the music from those acts, especially Megadeth. But on the other side of that, you have new metal bands like Korn and Cold Chamber, and Limp Biscuit, Deftones, Slipknot, and a plethora of other acts that tech respects that I personally find to be unbearable to listen to. 
Now look, no offense to Tech 9 or to anyone else out there who likes these bands or the new metal genre in general, but for me personally, punk, grunge, and new metal are the sole reason why I did not get into heavy rock music until I was close to 20 years old. When I was a kid, the only rock music that was ever on the radio was fucking new metal. And at that point, I thought, if this is what heavy rock and metal music sounds like, I don't want any part of it. And it would take nearly a decade before I finally took a chance and found the styles of metal that I really liked. That being said, Kabash seemed destined to go in that direction, at least upon first glance. And maybe they would have had they actually put out more material. But if I'm being completely honest, the two songs that they did release are, in my opinion, really, really good. Now, I can't quite explain it. There's definitely some touches and influence of new metal in there, but it doesn't fully cross that line, to my ears at least. It just kind of sounds like the approach that Tech 9 and Chris Calico normally take when they're attempting more rock-oriented hip-hop tracks in their own music. It's hip-hop first and foremost, but with the aggression, heaviness, and momentum of metal acting as a texturizing backdrop to Chris and Tech's lyrical rhyme schemes. It pretty much perfectly walks the line of what you would call metal and hip-hop or rap metal by definition. And I'm not just saying this because Tech and Chris are two of my favorite rappers. Trust me, if the music sounded like shit, I'd be the first one to acknowledge it. On a side note, one day I'll do a video on their other side group, 816 Boys, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's probably the worst shit that Chris and Tech have ever released and cut, but that's for another day. But as far as this project is concerned, it's the real deal. To me, at least. So... Why did the group only ever release two songs? What exactly happened? Well, there's no clear-cut answer to that question, but we do know that timing and conflicts and schedules more than likely acted as a catalyst for this decision. Excuse me. More than likely acted as a catalyst for this decision. The sampler booklet listed fall 2007 as the initial release date for their debut album, I'm African Psycho, but nothing ever came of it, so all we had for the next few years was the Little Pills song from the Ever Ready sampler. So the album had its release changed to Fall 2012 from Fall 2007, five year gap, and the second song to be released after that date change was made public was called God of War, and is in my opinion a perfect follow up to the Little Pills song. Personally, I think this one is the better of the two. Little Pills is still really, really good, and I still play it quite often, but God of War is closer to what I'd expect of a rap metal project involving Tech 9 and Chris Calico. Just the writing and the way everything is performed sounds like what I would expect if you told me these two were doing something in that genre. So... 2012 came and went, with no updates of any kind, and now here we are, 12 years later, and it seems like the project is dead in the water for the most part. Mostly because Chris Calico is no longer with Strange Music, and I remember Tech 9 recently being asked online about an update on the project, and he specifically said that it was only ever intended to be him, Chris, and Dirty Worms under the Kabosh moniker. And with Chris no longer being signed to Strange, it was highly unlikely that this project would ever come to fruition in the future. No mention of what exactly happened to Dirty Worm's involvement in the project, but it seems like there may have been some sort of falling out there as well. I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. But. You mentioned Kabash again. Is, is, is this like the band that you're going to do the album with? Or? I don't even know if I'm going to do Kabash anymore, because I was supposed to do Kabash with, uh, with uh, Dirty Worms. Yeah. Little discrepancies that happened. Uh, about, we thought the band was uh, not together anymore, but it was a total mix up. Mm -hmm. So, if I don't do that with uh, Kabash, I mean, if I don't do that with Dirty Worms, I'm not gonna do Kabash. You know I guess that seems to be that. 
but I guess Tech tours a lot and has a roster of artists to tend to, and Calico is about to go on tour with Locksmith, or he, he may already be on tour with Locksmith, and is trying to build up his new label, Earhouse, so I get their schedules might not line up anytime in the near future. But still, Tech made it sound like it would never happen at all, so I guess I must close the book on the matter. And that's all for now, folks. If you enjoyed this video, I kindly ask you that you like and subscribe, share this video with anyone you think who may be interested in this type of content. Um, if you are a longtime Tech Nine or Strange Music fan and you like the Kabosh songs, uh, and you'd like to leave your opinion and tell me what you think about it or what you thought a prospective album would possibly sound like if they ever decide to do it again, please leave a comment and let me know. Um, if you had no idea what this was until I made this video, are you going to go listen to the two Kabosh songs? And if you do, anyone who wants to come back and leave a comment, let me know what your opinion on it is. Um, be greatly appreciated just to get a conversation going. Until next time, everyone, be safe, take care of yourselves, and each other.